life, love, and pop pop culture. Hi, I'm Danielle Delgado. And I'm Lee Dowd, and you're watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. So you're in the web series, I'm fine. And it's in its second season, so yep. congrats on that. Thank you, thank you. Tell me a little bit about your role. Um, I play Jeff. Uh, the show is centered around Nate. Um, and it kind of starts with him in season one. It starts with him kind of coping with a breakup. Um, I play Nate's best friend, um, who you later learn in season one has feelings for Nate. Um, it's a little bit of a rift that happens between the two. And then that's kind of how we find ourselves in season two, mm -hmm. uh, at odds, um, not speaking. Um, and that's kind of our, our tension and our drama for season two. Mm -hmm. Um, we end the season on a good note, spoiler alert, sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, the show itself is about just how, um, we kind of interact with one another mm -hmm. as people in the modern world with social media, with dating apps, um, and how, uh, you know, men specifically within the LGBTQ community in West Hollywood, mm -hmm. uh, kind of form relationships and bonds with one another. So that's, yeah. that's what we're exploring. Well, aside from that, you're also, um, in K-Town Cowboys. I am. And, um, Ira, which you also produced, right? Yes. So tell me a little bit about these roles and how it felt being a producer and an actor. Uh, you know, being a producer and an actor is, um, it's really hard. <laughs> It's a, it's a lot of work and it's like a lot of switching hats throughout the day. Um, you know, I was on set for the couple projects I've produced. Um, I think now, what are we at? Two, two shorts, two features. Um, being on set every single day um, as a producer is very time consuming and stressful. And then on the days that I'm also on camera and acting, kind of yeah. having to switch that and drop into a character, um, it's crazy. But it's I'm also sure super, it super fun. Like, yeah. that's the other thing is that that challenge is really, uh, it's really entertaining. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a really cool experience to be on both sides of the project. Mm -hmm. And, you know, taking a project into post-production after everything's been shot, it's really tedious, meticulous. Mm -hmm. um, but I think also it gives me a different sense of pride mm -hmm. when the, the final product comes out. Ira's not fully done yet. Yeah. Um, Ira's still kind of finishing post-production. It's been in post for a while. There's a lot of uh, special effects they've been trying to add to it. Mm -hmm. um, but I got to work with uh, an amazing actress who I'm not allowed to announce. We haven't oh, actually announced. You're out I on know, us. I know. I've, I've never been allowed to announce who is actually the star of our movie. Mm -hmm. um, and their, her team is, is asking us to, to not release it until the film is actually finished. Oh. Um, so that was, that was a really fun and crazy experience. Uh, on the production side. Um, and then K-Town Cowboys is uh, is one of my favorite projects I've ever done. To it actually looks be, really funny. It's hysterical. <laughs> it's so good. And to have worked with uh, executive produce, uh, producer Ken Jeong um, on this project and just to be with Asian American actors and filmmakers was... Mm -hmm. uh, it was so cool. So we have to talk about your piece for The Advocate. Okay. Tell me how important it was for you to share your story. It was really scary, actually. Uh, when I was asked to write the piece for The Advocate, I actually, I said yes, and then I kind of went back on it. I was like, do I want to do this? Do I want to to write about this? Like, it's very personal. Um, and talking about race is never an easy thing to do. Oh, yeah. um, I think that's... That was the biggest challenge for me to overcome was, you know, knowing that I was going to be um, under scrutiny from whoever was reading this piece, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's about being black or being gay or being Asian, whatever it is, as a minority, it can be really hard to write about your own experience, mm -hmm. um, knowing that people in the majority might sit there and criticize you. Um, I'm really, really happy that I did it. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, an amazing experience. It was cathartic. Um, I think I got a lot of stuff off my chest. Mm -hmm. um, and I I think my goal was just to be as honest as I could be. Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't, I didn't set out to accuse anybody of, of having done me wrong. That wasn't the point of the piece. The, the point was to just start a conversation, um, to talk about marginalizing a group of people in an already marginalized community like the gay community. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if we're already being ostracized a little bit, or if we're already kind of on the outskirts, like, 
I don't think there's a need to, to further promote any sort of prejudice or anything, whether it's about race or sexuality. Um, and so, you know, my piece, I wrote about my experience as a mixed race Asian American in the gay community. Mm -hmm. um, but I think my goal was to really kind of transcend race itself and just talk about, uh, you know, the power of our own words on, on social media and dating apps, whatever it is. Um, I wanted to just put the message out there that, you know, I think that people need to be a little more careful about what they're saying and what they're writing because, you know, whether it's taken out of context or whatever, there are some kind of crazy things out there on the internet. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was an amazing experience and the response that I received uh, was really moving and really humbling. I, I didn't really expect um, as much positive response as I got, which definitely outweighed uh, you know, a few of the, the fun negative responses that I received. You've done so many amazing things in Thank the you. last 10 years as an actor, but what do you want your fans to remember you for the most? My honesty? <laughs> um, I don't know, I think the proudest thing at the moment for me is, is this piece for The Advocate. I think um, if I can be a voice for the minority, if I can be a representative um, for these communities, the gay community, the Asian American community, uh, the mixed race community, um, that's how I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered as somebody who uh, fought for the little guy, who, who stood up against, um, against the norm and, you know, pushed, pushed to be seen, pushed to be heard. Um, so I think that's really important. I think that's the only way things will change in, in society. Life, love, and pop, pop culture. If you enjoyed my interview, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and don't forget to look out for new videos every Wednesday.